Today, we're gonna be asking the age old question. Actually, I'll be honest, I'm the only person asking a question. Can we actually use Photoshop to design a user interface in 2020? So earlier today, I put out this tweet here. Is there ever a use case for designing a website in Photoshop in 2020? And almost 20% of you said yes. And then the other percentage, four out of five, basically said no or hell no. And that's going to be what I'm going to answer, at least one guy's opinion. Is there ever a use case for designing a website or an app in Photoshop in this current day and age? So I will also do this while talking over a time-lapse video of me actually designing a website, a modern website that relies heavily on photograph elements um, in the UI. And I'll give you my thoughts. I'll let you know when I first started using Photoshop, and that was so long ago. I am so old, it's, it's getting scary. And I will also provide you context uh, from the UI design industry as a whole in terms of you know, uh, what software we've been using. And then also ultimately my opinion on that answer. All right, so if you haven't yet, subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now as a front end developer or a designer, you know that you need a personal portfolio. And if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace, they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform. But to be a pro, you need to use the tools that the pros actually use. So level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now, real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with a free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. So I remember designing my very first website in Photoshop, which was likely around 1998-ish or so. And even way back then, I understood that the utility in first designing a mockup before the HTML and CSS process was really important. It allows us designers to quickly and easily create and iterate over a UI design without having to tamper around with code. Now this is the same exact reason that we use modern UI design tools today such as Figma, Adobe XD, and Sketch. It's to help us envision how a UI will look as well as how it will behave. Now myself, along with many other industry professionals, used Adobe Photoshop almost exclusively for well over a decade. But this changed when Sketch burst out onto the scene of UI design in the early 2010s. Now, I was a Windows user, so Sketch wasn't an option for me. I stuck with Photoshop for even longer than most individuals. Now once Adobe XD came out, that's actually when I made the switch. Photoshop was never built to be a UI design tool. Its core strength has always been around photography and editing photos. The barrier to entry was also quite high because the vast amount of features and options within Photoshop was unnecessary to a UI designer. It also lacked many features that would benefit that same UI designer. So that's where Sketch came in because it was the first design tool meant for UI designers, or one of the first at least, and it was much more simplistic. Now fast forward several years later, and now we have Figma, Adobe Experience Design, and many others to choose from. Figma and Adobe XD have taken the improvements that Sketch introduced and integrated awesome prototyping capabilities and even with animations. But it's 2020, and I wanted to ask the question, is there ever a case where Adobe Photoshop is worth it for tackling a UI design? Well, I'm going to say yes, and on two fronts. The first front is using Photoshop as a supplemental tool. Some UI designs require photographs, and sometimes those photographs need editing that only Photoshop or raster-based software like Photoshop can handle. So depending on the UI design, I still use Photoshop as a part of the process. Now, on to the second front, which is why you're probably here. Yes, I think there's a use case for using Photoshop solely, as in the only app to design a user interface in, and that use case is this. If you're working on a project that is very simple, 
yet also requires the use of a lot of photograph-based elements that require editing, and it doesn't need prototyping, I think Photoshop would be perfectly fine. Take for instance this project you're seeing here. It's just serving as a simple landing page, and let's assume it's a page based on a limited time project where we know we won't need to create future iterations with a bunch of subpages and such. It's also relying heavily on photographs that are modified in a way that traditional UI design tools can't handle. And we've also determined that we don't need any prototyping. So I think there's no problem with using Photoshop in this case. And of course, it's a really limited use case. I personally haven't designed a website in Photoshop in years upon years. And that's because for most projects, you want the ability to create reusable UI components. You want the ability to prototype between multiple artboards. You want vector tools for drawing and such. Now, if you did need prototyping with this type of design and all the other things that I mentioned, then I don't see the harm in creating the UI first here as I'm doing and then replicating the UI using tools like Figma or Adobe XD using the assets created and refined here in Photoshop. Nonetheless, I still thought this would be a fun video because many designers scoff at Photoshop for UI design. But in the end, the only thing that matters is the end result, not what tools you use to achieve said result. It's sort of similar to how developers get into debates about Vue versus React, PHP versus Python, or in recent times, Node versus Deno. Now what ultimately matters in the end is the user experience and their interaction with your product. And that's it. All right, so let me know what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to give it a like. Click the bell notification icon when you decide to subscribe, which will be right now. And I'll see you soon. Goodbye.